Welcome to Cyber Frontier, bringing you the latest news, trends, and hottest topics that focus on advances in cybersecurity and cyber industry economics. Our expert yet down-to-earth hosts make cybersecurity straightforward. They ask the tough questions and make this challenging topic something that everyone can understand. Our candid approach lets guests open up on topics we would all like to see addressed. You can find us on the web at newcyberfrontier.com. That's www.newcyberfrontier.com. Now join today's host as he introduces the topic for today's new Cyber Frontier. I'm Sean Murray, New Cyber Frontier. We have a special guest with us today, um, all the way from the East Coast. How are things down in Florida? Chris Hadnacki from Social Engineering, Social Engineer LLC. I want to make sure I corrected myself there. Things are good and warm. Just quarantined at home like everyone else, but <laughs> not complaining too much. We're healthy and safe, so I guess that's good. Well, great. Um, Chris, uh, welcome to the show. Um, been trying to get you on for a while, and everybody's so busy, and you're always extremely busy. Uh, high demand. You know, you you focus on a, a topic um, in a trade craft that is significant to a lot of organizations, and sometimes they don't even understand um, you know, uh, what social engineering is or all the different uh, uh, vectors. Uh, why don't you tell us who you are and, and give us a little bit about your background, your company, and, and why is this such an important thing in our lives? Sure. So uh, Social Engineer uh, LLC focuses on human-based attack vectors. So we're like a, a pen testing company, a company that does penetration testing. But instead of focusing on the computers, we focus on the humans inside the company. So uh, when we talk about social engineering from that angle, usually we're focused on things like you mentioned, like phishing calls, like so, you know, phishing phone calls or phishing emails or smishing attacks, that's SMS types of phishing or impersonation. And one of those four vectors are the things that we see constantly used against uh, individuals, you know, homeowners, corporations, employees, large, small companies. Um, and especially right now with what's going on with the world pan vishing and phishing attacks on, on just everybody around the globe. So it's even more important now than it's ever been uh, to realize how these attacks work and why they work and to understand how we can defend against them so we don't fall victim to them. Yeah, it's, it's a good point, you know, with... Uh with the pandemic and everybody working from home, you know, the, the organizations had to pivot and uh, adopt technology that they weren't used to. And so we had, we had issues with Zoom and some of the other platforms, you know, everything from vulnerabilities to Zoom sessions being taken over, the Zoom bombing, um, you know, people have a responsibility to configure the technology, you know, when they adopt it. Um, but, you know, the, the focus is, we want to be productive. We want to get back to, to business. We're going to adopt technology. We're not going to configure it. We're not going, we're just going to jump right in. And so that's really where that, that human element, uh, they're vulnerable. So they're doing something that they're not used to doing. And that's where, you know, this uprising, all the, the social, uh, social engineering in the various forms. Uh, what have you seen out there? What are the most significant, uh, you know, stories that you've seen? Well, I mean, right now, everyone's got fear, right? So they're playing on the, the FUD, right? Fear, uncertainty, and doubt. Um, attackers are playing on that because everyone's got fear about everything. I mean, if you go to the grocery store, you're going to come back sick. Uh, that that person that uh, delivered your, your takeout, where they, did they have COVID? Um, you know, are we ever going to get back to traveling again? Is social distancing the new norm? There's just so many questions that people have that are unanswered uh, that, it's a perfect time for attackers to use that uncertainty and doubt and, of course, then mix it with fear to get us to do things like click links, right? So one of the popular fish that's going around now is, you know, see a list of everyone in your community who's been, um, who, who's been verified with COVID-19. Now, you know, a little critical thinking says, why would a local government agencies send out the names of people who, who have been diagnosed with COVID um, when it's illegal to do that according to HIPAA law? But fear takes over our thinking. And we say, wait, wait, one of my neighbors might have it. I was just outside talking to Joe the other day. 
and you want to make sure his name's on the list. You want to make sure the guy next door that your kids might play with once in a while, that their family's not on the list. So fear takes over. You don't critically think, and then you click that link to see the list, and then you're, you know, you're compromised. Um, you said it before. A lot of people in the companies have changed the way that they work. So they are sending all their employees to home-based offices, and now there's a big fish going out from – it looks like the HR department saying, hey, since you're working from home, we need you to install this program that will keep your devices secure while working from home. And it's malware. You know, It looks like it's going to be a VPN or something, and they're getting people to click the EXE and install it. And because the pretext seems so natural, it seems so real right now that a lot of people are just falling for that and complying. So it's, it's almost a perfect storm for the timing, the situation in the world, and the emotional content people are under to perform these attacks. Yeah, it, it, that's another great point, too. When you take a look at um, how do you make the uh, the fish, the social engineering attack, look uh, viable, look uh, authentic? Selling security <laughs> as as a solution. Um, you know, why, why wouldn't you, um, you know, want to be secure? Uh, we're seeing the same type of uh, phishing emails with a lot of financial institutions, small businesses, for example. Um, we're seeing... Um, you know, hey, if you uh, need one of these um, small business loans, um, you know, click here to apply. And, and so, you know, we're seeing banks, hey, look, your uh, banking credentials have been compromised. Um, please log in here to change your username and password. And so those are all legitimate things. And then, so I'll ask you this, um, who do you think are more susceptible to um, social engineering attacks. Uh, is there one, you know, demographic, children, elderly, you know, business? What, what, do you, what do you think? Who's more susceptible? Right. Humans. I don't think there's any group. I think it depends on the pretext. Like if you said uh, we're going to use a Facebook pretext, then your general um, uh, audience wouldn't be the, the 50 to 65-year-olds, right? Uh, if, you, if you're saying let's use a vishing call, then probably that 40 to 50 year old range is more susceptible because we're used to talking on the phone. If you're going to send smishing attacks, it's probably the you know uh, the 15 to 19 year olds. Um, you know, it, it just it depends. The, the answer is it depends on the pretext. You know, if if someone like my my company, we're all we're a small company. We only have 15 people. We uh, all know each other really well, and we talk throughout the day all the time. So if all of a sudden my employees get an email from HR department, which we don't have an official one, and they said, oh, install this software to stay secure while you're working from home, they'd be able to go, well, that doesn't make any sense. And they would ping me and go, hey, Chris, is this even real? I'd be like, nope, that's a fish. And they'd delete it, right? You right. get rid of it. Um, so that it's, it's, it depends on the, uh, on the pretext. Whereas, you know, recently I've been getting a slew of these you know, you have unread messages in um, in Office 365. They look legit. Now, fortunately, I haven't fallen for any of them, but they keep getting better and better, looking more and more realistic and looking more and more like they actually came from Microsoft. So it's it's um, it, the, the answer to your question is really just depending on the pretext for the person that's being attacked. If the right pretext hits the right person at the right time, it's going to work. And now what we're seeing is attackers are more targeted so they're actually looking for their instead of sending out like you know one million Viagra emails and hoping that one percent click, they're looking at a company that just announced, hey, we're going to send all of our people to work from home. They're doxing a few of those people, and then they're sending those particular people the, a, an attack email. So it's it's a it's a different world out there now the way these attacks are being performed. Yeah, great points, Chris. You know, um, we're talking to a Chris Hadnacki from Social Engineer. LLC. And uh, we're going to come right back after these messages and finish our conversation. Cyber Resilience Institute helps build strong cyber communities designed to prevent members from attack. Like building a neighborhood watch, it takes coordination and a sharing community to protect our identities and valuables in the virtual world. Typically, we hear that organizations know they need to do something to protect their cyber assets, but don't know where to begin. Let Cyber Resilience Institute help your community create an action plan. Cyber Resilience Institute will build your community or business marketplace so that it is designed to support a collective cyber defense. 
Contact them for more information at cyberresilienceinstitute.org. Welcome back to the new Cyber Frontier. I'm Sean Murray. Our special guest today is Chris Hadnacki, all the way on the East Coast down in uh, Florida, uh, living up the, the dream inside. Uh, hopefully you've got good air conditioning. It's starting to warm up down there. Um, you know, we were talking about social engineering. We're talking about the pretext, you know, it, it, basically the targeting, right? So uh, the different types of technology geared towards whoever the targeted audience is for um, whatever that, that attack and, and whatever the, the information that we're trying to get from that, uh, from that victim. Um, uh, you keep track of, of, of some statistics. Uh, how successful are a lot of these attacks that we're seeing today? That's a good question. Um, so we, we do keep track of the attacks that are being used, but it's really hard to give you an answer to how successful they are. Um, uh, you know, the ones that we're getting uh, notice of are the ones that got caught. So that, of course, uh, means that they got caught. Now, did they get caught after they got clicked or did they get caught before? Uh, that, that's hard to know. I mean, I can tell you from a corporate perspective from our work, but uh, the one of the biggest flaw, flaws, and it's a flaw that we can't fix with our industry, is we are a reactive, not proactive industry, right? If we can ever be proactive, I mean, look, if I could be proactive, I'd be a bajillionaire and I'd be doing this interview from my private island, not worried about COVID, right? Um, in the sense that we wait for the bad thing to occur and then we analyze the bad thing and we say, oh man, all of these bad things are occurring. How can we save people from it? We come up with ways that they could be saved. We announce it. We talk about it. We do things like this, come on podcasts, talk about it, uh, put it in the news, do interviews. People then react to that, and they get a little more secure, and then the bad guys up their game. So it's it's a constant cat and mouse game, and it, it's hard to say, like, what the, what what that's and all the reports, and we can probably tell you, but I, I could say that just from uh, some conversations and talking to some companies that these realistic COVID-19 scams are what's working, you know, especially, so go to homeowners. Um, do you need help with your stimulus check? You know, I'm calling from the IRS. That's working amazing. Uh, for older folks, there's a scam going around saying that you can uh, pre-order your COVID-19 test. Just give us your credit card or banking information. Um, come to small companies, the office who's been, and diagnosed, you know, open this Excel to find out. Uh, install this EXE to keep your internet secure while you're working from home. Um, you know, as you go down the list, you started to see that all of these attacks are related to, to that. And then take it to vishing, we're seeing BEC scams are hundreds of percent on the increase. So calls where people are saying, hey, I know because you've been working from home, everything's kind of delayed. Well, your invoice to me is 30 days late. I need you to pay it. I'm going to email you a new one. Please pay it today. They email them an invoice from a vendor that they know. It has banking information on it. The person does the wire transfer. I think it was Toyota lost $34 million in three transfers, three transfers, $34 million through three phone calls with three transfers. And someone finally on the third transfer, they were like, I don't know if this is right. And then they caught it. They got some of the money back, but a lot of it's lost. I mean, $34 million because of, of, of vishing BEC scam. So it's um, it's a scary time for, for companies, homeowners, individuals, old people, young people. It's a, it's a scary time out there. In addition, we're isolated and alone, which affects our critical thinking. It affects our uh, sadness meters. It affects our ability to, to um, I don't know about you, but for me, it's like we were just joking about this in the company. The days blend together. I can't remember if it's Tuesday, Wednesday, Monday. Like, well, I don't know what day is it. And um, last week on Friday at like 3 p.m., one of my employees said, hey, if I don't talk to you before the end, have a good weekend. And I laughed because I thought she was joking, like she was taking the rest of the week off. And I didn't say it back. You know that awkward thing, like you don't say have a good weekend back. And there was this weird pause. And then she said, you don't know that it's Friday, do you? And I'm like, it's not Friday. And I'm like, look, you, know, you do the computer clock look. And I'm like, oh. It's Friday. <laughs> She's like, yeah, man. I'm like, I thought it was Wednesday. I'm like, oh, like normally I'd be happy that I'm ahead, but I'm, I honestly was going about the day thinking I had two more days in my week to accomplish things. And now I don't. And I'm like, oh my gosh, this is terrible. So yeah, days are blending together and that creates a situation where critical thinking isn't uh, high on the list. So it, it's a, it's a really a perfect time. 
Yeah, so that's a, another good point. Um, I know that, uh, you know, I've talked to uh, some colleagues right now. And so um, one of the companies that I work with, uh, they have their own internal fishing program. And I've got a, a colleague who's, who's the CISO, mm -hmm. and he says right now, given uh, the afternoon or the late evening, because people are working all kinds of different weird hours, um, that the uh, internal fishing uh, program is getting more hits, and a lot of it is being attributed to fatigue, uh, too many work yeah. hours, um, there's no more work-life balance, and so yeah. they've seen a spike in, in their fishing, internal fishing campaigns. You know, it's an interesting um, no, like So since the beginning of my company, so we've, we're around almost 11 years, we've always worked from home. We've been a home-based company. It's one of the things we talk to our employees about often because being the CEO, I, I am guilty of this. There is no work-life balance because my office is 10 feet from my bedroom. It's, you know, 30 feet from my kitchen. It's you know not that far from anywhere I need to be. So I don't have a commute, which means that I can go out and have dinner with the family, which we do every night. We sit at the table, no computers, no phones. And then when we're done with dinner, I have a 10 foot walk back to my office and I can continue working. And then I can, I can come back to my office and I can work and working till one, two, whatever in the morning. It's not a big deal because I'm, I'm right here. When I get too tired, I can literally crawl the 15 feet to my bed and go to sleep and wake up and do it all over again. Now, we talk a lot about work-life balance with our employees, but now here we have a group of people who have never worked from home, and now they're forced in this situation. So what you said is 100% odd hours, which is part of the reason why we forget what day it is, and now they get an email, and their brain is not in critical thinking mode, and they go, oh, this looks legit. HR would tell me to do this. Click. And they're falling for it. Or uh, there's a di difference about getting a call on your business phone. When my business line rings, I understand that I answer it because I don't get spam calls on my business line, right? It's not a cell phone. So when I get a call on my business line, it's someone who wants to talk to me about business. So I answer it, Chris, how can I help you? You know, and I'm, I'm very formal. When my cell phone rings, I answer it like, what? You know, <laughs> I, I don't know if it's a spam call or if it's a salesperson or if it's a business person. So I go, what? And they're like, is this Chris from social engineering? Yeah, it is. Oh, who, how are you doing? Or if it's like, can I speak to the homeowner? Click. Right. Yeah, so right. think about this. All of these people going to work from home, have their business phones forwarded to their, their cell phone. So now they get these calls on a device that in their brain is linked to personal atmosphere. So they're answering those calls, not with the business mind. And there's a lot of psychology behind this, a lot of studies that were done to explain how our clothing, our, our, our posture, our, our thought about our job, where we work in the house could affect our ability to view it as a job or, or not. So what you said is so accurate and it's even scientifically proven that a lot of these people might be um, viewing their job differently now because they're working in bed or they're working in their pajamas. They're not realizing, get up, take a shower, put a suit on like you normally would. They're, they're working in a, in, a, in a very relaxed environment. And then when these serious things occur, they're not handling them seriously because they're looking at them in a very personal light. So I, it's, it, it is, it is a big problem. Yeah. This is a great conversation, Chris. We're going to take a break uh, for our sponsor. We'll be right back with uh, Chris Hadnacki from social engineer LLC. Welcome back to the new Cyber Frontier. My name is Sean Murray. I'm the host today. We have Chris Hadnacki from Social Engineer LLC. Um, Chris is and I were we're talking about you know 
Um, social engineering has been around since the dawn of man, right? So, um, you know, you have professional social engineers like law enforcement and lawyers and doctors trying to elicit information. Um, you know, probably the best social engineers in my house are my kids. You know, they're trying to get you to change your behavior, right? And, and get you to do something you don't want to do. But, you know, you focus on the malicious insider. Um, are there any, I know it's an old trade craft, but when, when you go out with your clients and you do an assessment, what are the things that you're looking at, um, you know, for your, for your clients? So um, that's a great question. It really depends on, uh, on what they hire us for. And I know that's a cheesy answer, but I'll give you some examples. Some clients hire us to, let's say they have a call center. So they're not worried about someone physically infiltrating. They're worried about someone calling in and getting their people to give out client info. So we focus uh, solely on vishing. So we vish their people. We test their susceptibilities to vectors like that. Uh, some people, some people hold a lot of corporate secrets in their buildings, maybe like banks or pharmaceutical companies or, or healthcare companies. So they'll test. Uh, they'll ask us to come and test their physical infrastructure. Can we get past the security guards? Can we get into a side door? Can we walk around? And we're not talking dead of night, like broad daylight. Can we walk around as a fellow employee and steal things from the company? Um, some are, are, are worried about, are, are we susceptible to phishing attacks? So we'll fish them. And some of them are curious about it all. So they'll say, can you do all of those things and test us? Uh, so it really depends on what the fear is for the company on where they, they think. You know, think of it kind of like a doctor. If you went into a doctor for your annual physical, you may say, hey, check everything. I don't have any problems. Just check me out, make sure there's nothing bad. But if you have a pain point, we'll maybe do an x-ray of that. He'll look at that area. He'll just focus there. So for us, it's kind of like that. When a client calls us, we ask them a lot of questions. We talk to them about what it is they're trying to do and figure out. From that conversation, we make recommendations on what kind of tests we would recommend. And then they make the decision on what to move ahead on. So um, it's uh, all of our all of our um, um, services, though, for the clients like that, we try to mimic as closely as we can the the, the threat actor. So we take the, the bad guy and we simulate. So what we call ad adversarial simulation, um, we we simulate what the bad guys will do in an effort to tell your company how you fared against these attacks and then help you fix it before the real bad guys do come in. Yeah, that's that's great. And, and so a lot of, you know, that's the human pen testing, right? So there's a lot of uh, tools-based uh, organizations that do uh, these types of things. And your organization focuses on the human element. Uh, find the vulnerabilities, uh, test, you know, whatever the client's looking for, or, or maybe the whole tool bag, mm -hmm. and then uh, provide them, you know, uh, methods to, um, you know, training awareness, right? I, what I want to do now is I, I actually want to pivot over, you guys uh, do a lot um, out in the community as well. You do uh, Black Hat DEF CON every year. Um, you know, I've seen some of your presentations, live presentations at, at some of the conferences, and it's it's amazing. There's a great YouTube video that uh, you've got for a vishing call um, uh, with a with a mm -hmm. journalist, and, and we use that in our training classes uh, because it's so successful. Uh, within seconds, you know, you're into somebody's uh, cell phone account. But let's focus on um, you. You're actually um, kicking off your own conference that's coming up. Can you tell us something about that? Yeah. So in 2020, we had our first year. We call it the Human Hacking Conference. Um, it, it formed from the idea of what you just said. So we've been doing Black Hat now for uh, for 10 years. This will be our 11th year if if we have it right this year. Right. Um, and in those 10 years, what we noticed is how the the industry progressed. Um, more and more people were coming every year to the SE Village, and they were sitting there for all three days, and they were asking questions. There was more corporate people. There was more CISOs and CIOs coming and sliding their card across the table and saying, this is really great, but how do we make this into a professional service? How do we do this? How do we do that? So my, my, I started to think about there's so much need in the market right now for a professional social engineering conference. Yeah, there's a few uh, hacker SE conferences around, you know, where they focus mostly on the hackery stuff and they have speeches and other things, but it's, it's very much geared towards like the DEF CON crowd, you know, that, that, um, that hardcore hacking crowd. 
And I started to think, well, there's so many other areas where social, in- the C level, the, the everyday person, uh, teachers, lawyers, you know, doctors, um, could we create a conference that would focus on all of the things that we utilize in SE? Psychological manipulation, influence, nonverbals, um, you know, just understanding all of that and tying that back into how we can hack a human. And maybe not just from a security level, maybe you want to hack a human because you're a doctor and you want to learn how to communicate better. Maybe you're a salesperson, want to learn how to hack humans so you can be better at sales. Uh, you know, maybe you're a pen tester and you want to learn how to do this for a living. You know, the list can go on and on and on. Uh, maybe you're an HR person. You want to know how to communicate better to get better employee reviews with people, you know, whatever. Uh, all of these things are, are parts of what I would consider social engineering or human hacking. So we developed this conference that are taking some of the world's leaders in their, in their fields, like Joe Navarro, who's a body language expert. Uh, Mark Bowden, also a body language expert. Uh, Stephanie Paul, she's, uh, she's, a, a, she's an actress. She's been um, a stand-up comic, and now she works with corporations and their C-level on learning how to do better storytelling, which makes everyone just a better uh, manager and leader. Uh, we have Dov Barron as a leadership expert. Um, Ian Rowland, who is the world, like he's the granddaddy of understanding cold reading, you know, how, like how to be a psychic, like understanding that from a scientific level and teaching it to governments and things like that. Um, our Paul Wilson, he was on The Real Hustle in the UK. Uh, he's an actor, a magician. Like probably the largest scam artist ever that's you know legit and uh and he he's he comes uh nick ferno who's uh one of the world's leading osint experts um robin Dreek, who is the was the fbi behavioral analysis unit director for years and now he wrote four books or three books on trust and rapport um we just have so many people uh dov baron is a is a leadership expert um, who teaches people how to command the best out of themselves and kind of like, go for what they want. Uh, these, these folks are all coming in and, and conducting workshops. So we're not talking speeches, not one hour speeches, not, you know, things like that. Workshops where you sit through and you learn these skills from these people over a three day period. Um, we have a, an actress, uh, Brittany Caldwell. She comes in and does a, a whole method acting class um, on how to get into characters, which is just perfect for this we're going to have a pen test track this year uh so last year was our first year um you know first year conferences everyone warned me be cautious it's probably gonna you know suck and not be that great it was amazing i i I don't i don't even know how to like put it it was just it came off without a hitch it was beautiful um then covid happened so we were still planning 2021 it's in march in orlando uh so hopefully we'll be back to somewhat normal travel then and that's going to be very limited in space. You know, we're trying to part of the SE village that made it so popular was that, that you can hang out and talk. You can have a conversation. It wasn't filled with loud pounding music and pornography on the walls or things like that. It was about humans. So the SE uh, village, the human hacking conference, we made it with the same vibe. We want people to stand around and have conversations, to meet together, talk. So we're trying to keep this small so that way people can communicate and just learn from each other and spend time with these amazing workshop instructors. Um, so yeah, that's uh, in March of 2021, we'll be uh, kicking that off again this year. And that's on uh, uh, humanhackingconference.com. Uh, people can check that out if they're interested. Humanhackingconference.com. Yeah, yeah really long. I know. <laughs> <laughs> and is this on your, really uh, is this on your organizational website as well? Can people pivot from there? Yeah, I believe there's a, I, I, I'm going to say yes. And then as soon as we're done with this, I'm going to make sure. But okay. yeah. There, and what is the, what is the web the, address the, for your company? Dot social engineer dot, uh, social engineer yep. dot So com. We, have, we have, we have two. So we have social dash engineer dot org, which is a free website. So that website has a ton of information, newsletter, podcast, framework, blogs, all about social engineering, all about human hacking. And every resource on that is completely free. Um, and then the corporate side is social-engineer.com. Uh, so that, that is where we talk about all these services, these things that you and I talked about today. That's where that site lives. And then the humanhackingconference.com is all about the, the conference coming up in March. All right, perfect. Um, so, you know, 
we've been talking about uh, a topic that we normally don't get to talk about in, you know, this is, this is your bread and butter. This is what you do. Um, you're out there in the public. Um, you're, in my opinion, I mean, I'm, I'm around the world doing the same type of stuff. You're world renowned. I, I, I was in, in, in the UK uh, a couple of months ago and I was talking to a, uh, um, another instructor from Austria. We were just happened to be there, uh, with a client and, um, he had uh, actually been to Black Hat DEF CON and, and, you know, it's one of the favorite things he likes to do is to come mm -hmm. over and, and check you guys out. So uh, a plug for you and your organization, um, if, if Black Hat uh, DEF CON happens again this year, definitely be by to see you. Um, you know, uh, we mm -hmm. at ISSA uh, International, we're always there. So, um, you yeah, know, we'll come over and see you, have people stop by. Um, I'm looking forward to that conference in March next year. Uh, I'll be heading out to your site because that is definitely one I haven't been to. And uh, because uh, it's focused specifically on that tradecraft, uh, I think it's going to be a great conference, especially with the keynotes uh, in all these workshops that you're doing. It's a non-traditional conference. Um, I, I think uh, it, it's something great that you're doing for the community. So um, any parting words uh, in the last minute or so? You know, just um, critically think, people. It's uh, it's a hard time in the world right now. It's uh, I, I know that it makes things sound overly simplistic, but we can fix a lot of the attack vectors that are you being used against us by just slowing down, taking a minute, critically thinking. When you get an email, ask yourself: Does this email create fear? Does it create a negative emotion? Does it make me want to react fast? And if the answer is yes, then take a moment to breathe calm down critically think about your next action because right now most of us hack attack so we don't want to have to deal with the cleanup of all of that so slow down critically think and it's better to, to not take action and later on be, be safe than it is to take the action and clean the mess up so that's what i've just been telling everyone there's no there's no blinky box that fixes this problem so it has to be all up here yeah pause for reflection and 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 you know Take care of yourself. Hey, so um, this is Sean Murray uh, with the New Cyber Frontier. Our guest today has been Chris Hadnacki from socialengineer.com. Uh, uh, so as Social Engineer LLC and then social-engineer.org, correct? Yes. All right, perfect. Uh, thanks for coming and, and sharing your words of wisdom with us today, Chris. Thank you. Thank you listening to New Cyber Frontier. Remember to follow or like our post and circulate each new show to your networks. We keep you informed, bring you the latest news, explore new trends, and find the hottest topics. With New Cyber Frontier, you don't have to be a computer or cybersecurity expert. Just get plugged in. We encourage you to get involved. Tell us what topics interest you and join our mailing lists. You can find us on the web at www.newcyberfrontier.com. That's newcyberfrontier.com. Check out our previous interviews and please let us know if there are any topics that you would like to hear discussed. See you next time on New Cyber Frontier.